However, we welcome again, as I said again, the uh, targeted uh, airstrike is against Al Qaeda in Somalia. And reason being, Al Qaeda in Somalia is not a Somali problem. It is a global problem and it has to be addressed globally. So, therefore, uh, we have to have a common strategy against this common enemy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's have the gentleman back there. Uh, Tom Cable, London. Uh, my question is, what role does the UK see itself playing in Somalia, both in the short term and the long term? And another question is, uh, is the security that they're providing now, is it a long term or the short term? Well, the UK's role, uh, in both, particularly in the short term, the UK's role has been to help bring people together at this conference. And also we have been leading players in providing uh, aid to the Horn of Africa to try and uh, help prevent the famine. So we played a very big and positive role in that regard. Um, I think in the longer term, what we want to see is a political process in Somalia, which of course we will support. We'll support as, as friends and uh, uh, as members of the international community. But as far as possible in the future, the future of Somalia has got to be determined by its own people. So there is no selfish interest, no strategic interest here in terms of Britain in Somalia. It's saying what is happening in your country is affecting your people. It affects the rest of the world. We are here to help to play a role in the short term that's more about development aid, but a role in the long term that I hope is about diplomacy and support and the normal relations between um, two, two countries. Uh, gentleman here in the middle. Adam Green from This Is Africa magazine at the Financial Times. Um, I just wanted to ask specifically why the UK was mobilising around this issue now. The conflict has been going for a long time. I just wondered if you could clarify what the reasons are for the mobilisation at this particular time in oh. this particular way. Well, I, I've only been Prime Minister for a relatively short time. Uh, this, I think, is a important priority for Britain. I think if you look at areas of the world where there is danger and instability and problems that can affect us here in the UK. I think quite clearly the Horn of Africa is one of those areas. And so if we believe in a genuine national security approach where we bring together our aid policy and we bring together our foreign policy and our domestic security policy, there's a very strong argument for saying that British effort to bring people together over the issue of Somalia is a sensible thing for our country to do. I particularly felt one of the things that got me interested in this was obviously the appalling famine uh, that took place, but also this issue of uh, piracy and shipping, where clearly the whole of the world needs to come together and to put a stop to this appalling level of criminality. So it seemed to me that Britain could play a role as a permanent Security Council member as a country that's kept its promises on aid and so has some genuine trust on that issue, uh, that has a, a, a well-organised foreign office that can help bring people together, uh, that has great contacts in the Gulf and in uh, the African and Arab world. We could play a role in bringing people together with the United Nations and the African Union to try and go through all of these issues. And I think what's been remarkable about this conference is it's not just about aid, it's not just about development, it's not just about piracy, it's not just about terrorism, it's about all of those things. But at its heart is an understanding that none of those measures will work without proper political progress in Somalia. And this is not about telling people in Somalia what to do. It's saying there are great moves afoot in Somalia with the growth of the regional organisations, with the transition of the federal government, great moves underfoot that if the international community get, gets behind and supports, we can help make a difference. So it's very much my initiative to uh, call this conference. I thought it was a good use of British effort uh, and time, and it's been uh, good to bring people together and to have a conference that I think has led to some success. Let's take a um, gentleman right at the back there with the headphones. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. This is Ali Dahir from Shabella Media Network. Um, I would like to ask you my first question to the Prime Minister of Somalia, Dr. Abdiwali. Um, referring to the GROWER principle and uh, previous conf conferences that takes place in Mogadishu, as we are aware, the conference was not inclusive. It was only certain regions, I will say Galmuduk and Butlan, 
and a representative of Galmudug and Budland there. However, there was no representative of the other regions in Somalia. So whatever, I understand there was a very good outcome on that conference, but whatever the outcome of that conference, if was not prouder and not more inclusive, and there were no other okay. representative from the other regions, okay. how, would that be, how would that be obviously apply to? On the other hand, uh, my I think one question, one question each, because I, I want to try and take four yes. or five questions. So I think, thank you very much, sir. Question for uh, the- Thank you, the, the, good the question. Uh, but I beg to differ. Um, the Growway 2 conference was very inclusive. It brought together uh, the TFG, Puntland, Galmuduk, uh, and Sunnah wa a moderate religious uh, wing uh, in Somalia, but also uh, the, the biggest group that attended that conference was the civil society organizations. Uh, furthermore, we also brought people from the newly liberated areas people from Baladwain, which was recently uh, uh, liberated from a Shabab, um, and also people from the Jubalan. So this was the most exclusive conference ever in Somalia. And we will uh, make more inclusive as we go along. Uh, we want inclusivity is a paramount importance for us. We want an ex inclusive, uh, accountable, and transparent uh, governance in Somalia, and this is what we are look, uh, trying to uh, achieve Thank you. in the next political Thank discussion. you very much. Very clear answer. Any specific questions for the UN Secretary General or the African Union Secretary General? I think it would be, sir. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm talking about uh, um, uh, Barkulan, Barkulan Radio in AU. I want to ask you for Prime Minister, Somalia has no humanitarian action and you support the air strike and we know a lot of innocent people, children and women killing for that one. Who's, who's taking respons responsibility of the, that people who's dying for that one? Thank you. Uh, let me repeat again myself what I said. What I said is the life and the property of the Somali people is important for us and we have to protect the safety and the security of Somals. However, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, we have to uh, face this menace. And Al-Qaeda in Somalia, as I said again, is not a Somali problem, it's a global problem and we have to address globally. Therefore, again, we welcome a targeted air strike against Al-Qaeda, not against uh, the, uh, the populace or the uh, uh, population centers. That's what I uh, we support, not necessarily killing innocent lives. Okay, thank you. Um, lady here in white. Thank you. My name is Agnes Kenya London News. Mine is directed to the AU chairman. Uh, what is the role of the region? We already have Kenya, Ethiopia army in Somali. And will this initiative overshadow what the region is already doing in Somali? D'abord, je, je voudrais remercier quand même Avant de, oh, I would like to thank, first of all, to thank the Prime Minister, because uh, this conference is crucial for everybody. Better late than never. So we have been asking for several years that uh, AMISOM got an appropriate mandate, got a funding, an appropriate funding, and got uh, also a level of contribution of troops appropriate. Few months ago, we had just demanded to keep half of Mogadishu to protect the institutions. Today, we have a strategic concept which covers the whole Somalia. We have divided Somalia into four sections. You know, Mogadishu, section one, Baidoa, section three, uh, Kismayo section two, and also uh, Galgadwin section uh, one. The whole territory is covered. And the resolution of United Nations is giving us not only the appropriate mandate, approving the strategic concept, appropriate mandate, appropriate number of troops, and 
appropriate funding, not only voluntary contributions, but also statutory contributions. So this resolution 2036 is a crucial resolution for us. So we have in Mogadishu troops coming from Burundi and um, Uganda, about 905,000 troops there in section one. In section three, there, it is proposed that the remaining numbers of Ethiopian, of uh, Burundis and uh, Uganda, about 2,700 troops will go to section uh, three in Baldoa. There is no Ethiopian, we are not talking about Ethiopian there. The Ethiopian help, as you know, but they will not remain there. They are not in the framework of uh, our troops there. So in Baldoa, in Baldoa, it would be about 2,700 troops coming from the remaining number of Burundi and, uh, and uh, Uganda. So you see, I've answered the question of who will go to keep, to protect section, section, sec, section three in Baldoa. But I would like also to, to say that when yesterday Baldoa was delivered, many negotiations went on with the local authority of Baldoa to avoid bombing or destroying Baldoa. So the Shebab was moved out of Baldoa. So the fight came out of Baldoa. This is in order to protect civilians. Thank you. I'm going to have two last questions, the lady on the left and then the gentleman on the right. Thank you. Fidev Sobinson, CNBC. Um, Prime Minister, you mentioned uh, the next conference in Istanbul, and Turkey has been quite active in Somalia. Is there going to be a special initiative for Turkey, or has Turkey offered uh, any such initiatives? And uh, I also noticed that you emphasized um, uh, safety of journalists in your final communique. And Somalia is one of the um, most unsafe places in the world for the journalists. Uh, will there be any specific steps uh, to ensure journalist safety, particularly in the light of, of, of losing our colleagues yesterday? Um, well, first of all, on the issue of Turkey, I think the Turks have played a vitally important role in Somalia in delivery of humanitarian aid, of uh, help with the refugee camps, and I think uh, Prime Minister Erdogan has personally played a very important role, and I've talked with him about this issue uh, regularly, including last week, uh, and so I'm sure that the Turks for their conference in June will have plans for further steps. I think the key thing now, though, is as we've got a, a list of actions about pirates, about terrorism, about international agreements, all the things that we are going, we've promised to do, we have to turn those words into actions and all subsequent conferences, including meetings of the, the new contact group, the reformed contact group, should all be following up and making sure those things are, are done. In terms of uh, the safety of, of journalists, I think it's right, the communique mentions this, uh, I can't point to anything specific in, in Somalia, but clearly everybody wants to make starting with Mogadishu, but then fanning out across the country, the country safer for uh, all people to um, uh, be able to go to. One of the aims of this conference, getting so many uh, countries here, was to get them to start thinking again about putting their embassies back into Mogadishu. And I'm proud of the fact that the British ambassador is going to be back in Mogadishu and the embassy will be back in Mogadishu. Let me just take this opportunity, though, to say again as I said yesterday, how much I feel for, and I know the whole country feels for, uh, those journalists who were killed in Syria. Uh, Marie Colvin was an absolute giant uh, as a foreign correspondent, someone whose uh, writing I very much admired, someone whose dispatches um, uh, were incredibly moving and powerful. And uh, what has happened there is, I believe, not just a tragedy, but I think it's, it's right to see this as yet another evil act uh, by the, the Syrian government. Uh, I know there is huge pressure, rightly, uh, on everyone in the world, on the United Nations, on the United States, on Great Britain, on the Arab League, to do more to try and stop this butchery and this murder. But we do have to stop and remember 
Who is responsible for what is taking place in Homs, in Hama, in these other uh, places in Syria? It is the responsibility of the Syrian government. They are shelling, killing 